Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to take a look at a game that I got uh, a few months ago, but it, it's the Kickstarter version of this game, and so I'm not quite sure what the difference is between this version I have or the retail version, but it's this big box came here. I'm just going to pull out the lid because the game is actually pretty heavy. And so as you can see here, uh, I have Thunderstone Quest. And so this game is for up to four players. And I wish that they would have given more hero boards and uh, more player cards because I think this game could handle even five to even six uh, players. But I can talk more about that in my final thoughts. The game says it's uh, about 60 to 90 minutes long. I think that's pretty fair. Uh, the, f the few times I've played this game, I've played it with my brother uh, and I think my daughter played and I think my wife played. Uh, and so yeah, it took about 60 minutes, I think, in our session, but uh, if we had four players, it'd probably take closer to uh, 70, 80, maybe even 90 minutes to play. And, I'm, and there's different adventures that may contribute to the time, and you can also change the, the difficulty by adding things and stuff too. But before I get more into that, uh, it does say it's for ages 14 and up. Um, I think even a 12 year old could get this game. It's pretty simple. Uh, if anyone's ever played the Thunderstone Advance or Thunderstone, there are going to be a lot of similarities, but there's also a lot of differences. And so let's go down to the table and take a look at the game and the components, and then come back up and get my final thoughts. So the first thing you're going to want to do is set up the, the game to play. And so I have most of the stuff set up ready. So like what I would do is I would take all the level one tiles and I would shuffle them and I would take two of them and set the others aside and that's my level one dungeons and I'd put them side by side next to the level one dungeon rooms and I'd do the same for my level twos and my level threes Okay, and then I would take my starter cards and I would shuffle those. And I'd put them on my player deck. And then likewise, I'll take these cards over here, shuffle them up and put them on the player deck. And then I would take these level one monsters here. And then I would put a key in them So I'll put one key in there, put two keys in here, and I'll put three keys in the level three monsters. So then I would shuffle all these, I put them back there, and then I'd put a monster in each room. And I will zoom in so you can see what it is I'm doing. And I'll take all these cards, shuffle them up. I'll put them there. One monster there, one monster there. I'll take these cards down here. Shuffle them up, and again, one monster here, and one monster here. Okay. And then you have your guardian, which is double-sided. So you have one side that's a giant rat, and then the guardian, which is Morga the queen, and you put the rat's face up, uh, because you can battle that any time until the guardian is revealed. And the scenario says that when you reveal four keys, you would actually reveal the guardian. 
and everyone gets one last turn to either battle the guardian or to take a regular turn. And so on a player's turn, for starting off, you have, you have 12 cards to start with until you start going through uh, the quest, because then each quest uh, awards you another card. And so you start with 12 cards, so you draw six cards to begin with, and each player would have six cards to begin with in hand. And then, and what's really nice about having the player boards is they tell you too in order what you can do. And so what I can do with my starting hand, which I have five attack points here, and one uh, Thunderstone Shard, which gives me plus two strength. And so down here on these cards, which I'll bring it to the camera, so on these cards, we look at them, these are the attack points that you get. This is your strength level, which certain weapons require certain strength. So like this here, this sword, this short sword, so it re requires three strength points, but it gives a plus one to attack point. And so one of your adventurers cannot hold it, but if you gave him a dragon or a thunderstone shard, that'd give him four strength, then he could use it. Okay. And so when you are in the town, you can go to the bazaar and you can buy bread, you can buy a lantern, or you can buy a potion. I didn't take them out of the bag uh, because I didn't want to make a mess just for this video. But you have little bread tokens here. You have little lantern tokens here, and you have little potion tokens here. And there's about five or six different uh, miniatures you can choose from. So I, I'm using this little pal paladin here, uh, and this little dwarf here. And so when you go to the village, you get to shop. Uh, and so you get to spend your buying points to buy either a hero or an item, a spell, or a weapon. If you go to the temple, it says immediately place one or more cards in your hand back on top of your deck. You may heal one extra wound on this turn. So every time you go to the village, you can heal. And so they've done away with wound cards in this game uh, and they've given you a tracker a hit point tracker which i'll explain here in a second and so you would heal those instead uh, it says you may not level up a hero this turn and card effects will not be not allow you to enter the dungeon this turn so if you go to the temple you cannot level up a hero and so every time you go to the village you can heal and level up unless you go to certain places so like here you couldn't level up a hero if you go to the guild's quarters, you can level up two different heroes, but you have to pay the cost to level up separately. And so the cost is two more than the cost of the card that you're leveling up to. And it says here, you may level up one hero by destroying two Thunderstone tokens, or I say spending them, equal to the hero's printed shield plus two. And so like if I wanted to level up one of my starter heroes, I'd have to pay uh, a total of three uh, Thunderstone v uh, XP points, or VP, victory points is what they call them in Thunderstone Advanced. So like I'd have to spend it three to get to one of these, but then if I want to go to level two, I'd have to spend a total of four and then a total of five to get to the third level of that hero. Or I can go to the Arcane Shop of Wonders or the Shop of Arcane Wonders and I can spend 10 coins to buy a treasure card, various treasure cards. Each quest is going to tell you to put a different treasure card in that deck. Or should I say every chapter. 
uh, then you can go to the bazaar and that's where you can spend money to buy either a bread, a lantern, or a potion. And the potion allows you to heal a wound, a lantern gives you an additional light, and the bread uh, can be spent to give you two strength or you can spend a bread to add one uh, buying point to your hand. And the nice thing about the bread, the lanterns, and the potion is that you can keep them as long as you want until you spend them. Uh, whereas the cards, you have to discard all your cards at the end of every turn. Okay. And so on my turn, since I don't have any buying points, I would go take my guy and move to the wilderness first. And then I would determine if I want to go into the dungeon. And so in the corners of the dungeon rooms, you see these little torches. That's how much light points you need to go in there. Okay, and every dungeon is gonna be a little bit different. I got this one turned sideways. <clears throat> and so this one here, I'm gonna to have to spend zero light points to go to. It says you have, it says if you have a magic attack weapon, ignore this room, uh, this room's defense or uh, it's melee attack boost. And so when you see an asterisk next to uh, the symbol, that's what that is referring to. It's referring to the boost that it would get uh, if it wasn't being attacked by a magic attack. Okay, so if I was using a magic attack, it only cost four to attack this uh, goblin berserker. But since I have to use melee, if I go in there, I'm gonna have to spend five attack points. Okay, if I go into this room over here, I have to have one light point. And if I'm attacking with magic attack, it has protection uh, against magic attack. And the way they determine that is on this card, there's this little two on the side. That's the defense for magic. Uh, if it was green and there was a, a number there, that's the defense. Um, but so if I'm attacking him with melee, I would ignore that. That's only for the defense attack. And so let's say I go here, but if, even if I didn't want to go here, I could still stay here and attack the giant rat and it says you may level up one of your zero heroes which would be one of your starter heroes or adventurers uh, ignoring the the uh, thunderstone vp uh, symbol you know so it's like the vp or thunderstone token symbol uh, and so if I stayed there, I could just level up one of my heroes for free. And so in this game, you reveal all your cards and then you use them as such, but you do not discard them until the end of your turn. And so even if I used all these to take on that giant rat, I could still get rid of one to level up to a new hero. And so I would just remove this card to uh, the side of the game and ignore it for the rest of the game. Uh, and then I would buy one of the level one heroes. But if I did that, that's all I would be able to do. But if I went into this room here and attacked the Goblin Berserker, I'd have to take, uh, if I didn't defeat it, I'd have to take two damage and I would get two uh, victory points, two of these little symbols here, two of these little tokens here. And so that would help me to start building up faster. Uh, and then it, the further I'd go into the dungeon is the more light I have to spend. So it's zero to this one. If I go into this one, I have to spend one. But if I continue to go past that room into the next room, I'd have to spend a total of three light sources to get in there. And there's symbols and stuff that you'll see that you can't ignore uh, rooms. Uh, but I'm not going to discuss that right now. That's more more if you're playing it, I'm not gonna play it. I'm just gonna show you how the game kind of works. And so if I would go into here, I would take on this monster, spin my five, and I didn't have to spin my Thunderstone, but I'm gonna have to use it uh, just cause I have to. So then I would get this monster, would go face up on the bottom of the deck to show that that's where the deck would end. <clears throat> and so I'd get two of these tokens and then I'd replace the monster with a new card. If the new card was the key, let's see here. So if I had the key, 
I would remove it to the side of the board to show that one key has been found and I would replace it with a monster then. Uh, if the second key on any of the other deck would be a key again, or if the second card would be a key again on any of the other decks, I would have to reshuffle that key back into the deck and draw a new monster. You cannot draw two keys in one turn, which is a good way of slowing the, the pace of the game down. And then on this person's turn, they look at their cards and they realize that they have more to spend in town with. And so that's what they're gonna do. They would go, let's say the guild quarters because they don't really have a reason to go anywhere else. And so and they have a lantern. The lantern says if you complete your village phase, you may take a dungeon phase. If you do, you may not move out of the wilderness, which is nice because then you can go and attack the giant rat uh, and be able to level up one of your heroes that way too, which is really nice. But since they have six points to buy with, uh, I would probably buy, mm, I'd probably buy a short sword or an ax just to have it so that way I would, like me, I would probably go more for the cleric or the berserker. I think it's the berserker here. Uh, the fighter, sorry, either the cleric or the fighter, uh, because that's the kind of weapons they would use. But if I was going more for the mage or the, uh, I think this is a thief, rogue, uh, then I'd find things that they would use, or I'd even buy like the Tomb of Knowledge, because this is a really nice card that if you discard this card, or sorry, destroy this card, you get to level up one of your level one heroes for free, <clears throat> which is really nice. So those are the different aspects of this game the hit point tracker so you take these little hit point tokens I'm gonna move my board right here hopefully you can see it and you would if for every damage you take you'd cover up one of these spots and so if you notice there's numbers here on this track so it says six five four three two and one and so if you have to start taking these up, that's how many cards you would draw on your next turn. So if I fill up all my six slots, then I have to only take five. If it continues to go, I'd only do four, and then three, and then two, and then one. But what's nice about going back to the village every turn is that I get to heal one for free. If I go to the temple, I get to heal two for free. But the only bad thing about that is I can't level up a hero. So let's take it back up top and give you my final thoughts. All right, so my final thoughts. All right, so my takeaway from this game is that there are some things that I love about this game, like the miniatures, uh, just the different things that you can do throughout the mar uh, the town, because you know you can either go to the town or you can go to the dungeon, so you go to the town, there's different things you can do, which uh, makes the experience better there. Uh, the player boards are really nice uh, in Thunderstone Advance. You don't get those. Uh, some of the things that I don't necessarily care for is the dungeon delving system that they have. I understand it, but to me, it doesn't feel like I'm working up towards the the villain. The I don't feel like I'm necessarily working up towards the Guardian. And what I mean by that is in Thunderstone Advance, you would put the, th the Guardian towards the end uh, of the dungeon, mo the monster stack. Okay, and this one you have to reveal certain keys and they're randomly shuffled so you, they may pop sooner than later. You're never quite sure when they're gonna all pop. Uh, but in Thunderstone Advance, you, you know, I feel more like I was working towards getting there in a sense, like just the way they they went through the dungeon and the darkness levels and stuff, which I'll probably do a comparison of the two uh, sooner or later, hopefully sooner, uh, and show you the differences of uh, Thunderstone Advance and Thunderstone Quest. Now, Thunderstone Quest plays a lot differently, uh, and I'd say that it plays, in a sense, it plays better because you have a lot more options. Okay. The, another thing I don't necessarily care for is the artwork. A lot of it is very, uh, it's very bright and vibrant and colorful, almost like cartoonish kind of. Whereas the artwork 
in Thunderstone Advance, the previously felt more uh, natural, I guess. And uh, in that video that I do, I'll obviously do a comparison of, of some of the cards too. But I think this, this game is great for uh, small gaming groups. Uh, anyone that loves uh, like RPG games or dungeon delving type games, uh, if you're looking for a break from that, I think this is a good fit because you have, you know, it's card system, you know, it's a, it's a deck builder. So you're, you know, you're building cards as you play, but you are, you get to micromanage what you do in a sense Like you can go to the bazaar, you can go to the guild, uh, quarters, you can go to the temple, you can go to the shop of arcane wonders and buy treasures, or you can go and fight monsters. You have options you can do. And based on what you choose, you may be able to go and do some extra things. <clears throat> uh, I like the little bread, light, and potion tokens, the little, the little wooden meeple things they give you for that. Uh, the wooden, I'm guessing it's wood, uh, XP tokens. I, I liked the plastic ones that they gave uh, in Thunderstone Advance. They were really nice and they looked like the symbol that's even on this board. They look very much like that, where it's a, just a little uh, wood-shaped piece that, that looks like it's shaped like it, but it just doesn't have the detail. I wish that they would have given those plastic XP tokens in this game. Uh, and they have the two, they have the black and they have the gray to differentiate between five and one, which is really nice, especially in this game, because you, you may build up quite a bit of XP and have to spend it. Um, the level up system is, is similar to Thunderstone Advance, uh, the one thing I, I don't care for is that, like on the cards, like let's say this card here, I don't know if you can see or not, um, but it says to my, to my knowledge, okay, it's worth two XP at the end of the game, but the cost is, is uh, here, uh, and then this is how much it's worth when you go to town, okay. Well, in Thunderstone Advance, the cost of the card was like a little money bag. Uh, and then, you know, obviously the value was, uh, I think it was a, another money bag or maybe it was even a coin to, to show how much it was worth. But it's just like when you first start playing, you know, you see that five and it looks like a, a die or a square. You're like, okay, you know, so how much does it cost? And you have to like tell yourself, oh yeah, that means that's the cost. Uh, and there's very, very similar aspects to this game and then Thunderstone Advance. So like leveling up your heroes, you know, your starter heroes can level up to any level one hero and then you can level up through XP's and stuff or you can buy what is available and stuff. So I really enjoyed this game. Uh, do I think it's better than Thunderstone Advance? That's a tough one. I mean, this one has some really good aspects. Uh, even though I've talked about some negative things, I mean, just the the different way to go delve in the dungeon is great there is plenty of heroes plenty of monsters plenty of of items and weapons i mean like in my edition i've got several different quests the quest book and the rule book are very straightforward easy to follow and that's one of the things i really appreciate about a game is simplicity in reading the rule book and understanding what they're meaning. Uh, the quest book breaks down different scenarios for each quest. And so you will actually go through each quest three different times throughout the story of each, each chapter or each book or each quest. Uh, and so like for the first, this like I said, have it set up for the very first uh, quest and the very first encounter in the quest. And so you start with the Smorg of the Queen at level four, and then she can go to level five and level six. And then every time you go to a different page, it tells you how to set up what you need for the next chapter. I guess you, that's what I call them. I'd call them a chapter of that encounter or that book or that quest. And so this book is loaded with adventures. So there's even a chapter four at the foundation of the world in, and then it tells you, okay, that's, that's what they're called. They're called chapters. Then every section is a different encounter of the chapter. And then you, it tells you all the different cards that should come in that chapter and that set. 
and then it goes down to what you're going to need for the first encounter and so it's very easy to read very understandable it also gives you rules for an epic version of the game so you can download an epic version for thunderstone advance uh, and it plays with all the cards and so similar to that this game you can play with all the cards and do one very epic quest or they give you randomizer cards so you can play it randomly just like you would have in thunderstone advanced or thunderstone and and that's the rule book here everything is just so simple it's very straightforward and i think aeg did an excellent job with this game kudos to them thank you for making this game i really enjoy it and the fact that others that i play with really enjoy it and they want to keep bringing it out to the game table is fantastic and so that says a lot about a game and i would recommend that people should play this game before buying it because you always want to make sure that it's going to fit your gaming group it's going to fit uh, fit your appreciation level for certain games it's going to scratch that itch that you may have with a certain game and so definitely this is one that i would pick up uh, but if you are on the fence demo it or you know watch more videos of it if you go to a convention ask to play it to try to demo it uh, but it's very simple, very easy to follow. You get a lot of options again and really good feel. And so on a therapeutic level, uh, you are learning how to share, learning how to deal with, with failure uh, because sometimes you may have a plan to go into the, to the dungeon and, you know, based on the monster that you're fighting in the certain room that it's in, you may realize that, oh crap, I couldn't have done this. And so you're learning how to deal with you know, not getting what you expected. Uh, you are learning uh, management. Uh, you're learning how to strategize what you want to do with what you have. And so I think that's very important on a therapeutic level, a learning strategy. Um, a lot of people have difficulty thinking through scenarios in their daily lives. And so playing a game that uses strategy is, is easy practice for someone to think about how they should encounter uh, a tough situation in the real world and so that's my final thoughts i'll see you guys next time take it easy